All right, ladies and gentlemen, you may be wondering why I don't talk about my Porsche 911 anymore. Here we are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I am going to try to give you a rundown on all the reasons why the Porsche 911 that's sitting right behind me is a very special car to me. I remember having this car as a poster on my wall. It was a car that I saw in many iconic movies during the 1980s and 1990s. It's a car that I've always celebrated as one of the greatest driving cars of all time. And what I have found myself doing as of recent is I'm driving the car and not filming my excursions. Sometimes my reactions are very heartfelt and I'm just reacting off the cuff, not realizing that, you know what? I'm gonna keep this video to myself. So what I've done, I've taken the BMW 533i as the car that I drive, the classic driver, if I wanna take the car out for a spin. I wanna divide the miles evenly. Basically, if I'm able to put half the miles on my 533i during a hectic work week and save this car exclusively for the weekend because sometimes I'm very stressed from work and I'm like, I need to take the car out for a, for a spin just to get that energy out. I try to save this for the weekends when there's not a worry in the world, I'm not angry at anything, and I just try to get the car out on the road. The 911 sits a lot in this garage, but it does get driven only on Saturdays and Sundays and sometimes if I'm feeling extra peppy, I take it out on a Wednesday or a Thursday. I try not to run the local errands in this because this is an original paint finish. I don't want to do anything that's going to be potentially crazy. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you the three reasons as to why I'm not driving the 911 as much as I should. One, my first reason. What we would consider today a paint to sample option is this very rare and very meticulously maintained dark blue coupe. During period, during the 1980s, not many people checked the box for a dark blue exterior paint job. Single stage, base coat, very simple paint job. Many people picked Guards Red or some of the white options or whatever black option was available. The one thing that people don't realize is this dark blue shines incredibly beautiful in the sun. During a cloudy, overcast day like today, you're not going to see an amazing reflection of that blue paint. There have been times when my friends have seen my car for more than months at a time, consecutive months at a time, and they've wondered what color my car was. They simply thought that it was a black car. And then when they see it in the sun on a bright Sunday morning, they're like, wait, your car's blue? I had no idea. It's happened on more than one occasion. So the fact that this car is a dark blue, I wanna do the best that I can to preserve it in its original paint configuration. This is a car that I definitely do not want to respray because it only came original once, and it came original from the factory. The second reason why I haven't been driving my Porsche 911 as much is because now I have the possession of a second classic car, and that is to slow down my approach towards 100,000 miles on this particular Porsche 911. I have 98,000 miles in change. When I picked up the car, I had picked it up with 94,000 miles. So I have added roughly 4,000 miles between going to the Hamptons and going to Hayfields upstate in upstate New York. And there have been times when I've driven the car for hours at a time, just driving in circles, driving in loops between New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and even approaching the border of Rhode Island. I say that to say this, I am getting the most out of this car and I've become a better driver because of it and every single mile has led to many smiles. And it's an amazing car that I truly love and I truly appreciate. But at the same time, one of the reasons, one of the strategic reasons that I picked up a second classic car in the BMW 533i is because I wanted the classic sensation, but I also wanted to divvy up the miles between both cars. I didn't want to put all my classic miles on my weekends exclusively on this 911 Carrera which is slowly becoming more valuable each and every single day. But I try not to focus on the value. It's the fact that I know that if anything happens to this car, I simply cannot replace it. And not for a monetary standpoint, because I'm sure there are other Porsche 911s, there are millions of them, but where am I gonna find a dark blue coupe? Where am I gonna find the car that I've configured specifically to my exacting standards? I did a Porsche Classic radio, I did a custom steering wheel, I did a custom shift knob, I did 
all these custom touches, I've made this car perfect. Perfect for me at least. It is, for me, the ultimate driving car. And there's not a single thing I would change to it. In order to see like the changes that I've done, I've gained this sense of protection that I must protect the car to the best of my ability. When I first got the car, I was driving it like crazy because I just had complete disregard for the mileage. I was like, yep, 94,000 miles, who cares? But as I close in on 100,000 miles, I started to see that in a parallel form, the values started to climb. I knew that I needed to somewhat slow down my approach towards the 100,000 mile mark, even though the market suggests that the value will not be affected in a negative way. Either way, I'm enjoying the 533i because it's sort of taking away my attention from this car. I'll go to the BMW instead of sneaking this out of the garage. All right, so the third and final reason as to why I'm not driving the 911, I mean, I love the car, but I take the car out at four in the morning, five in the morning, six in the morning, when there's absolutely nobody on the road in order for me to go as fast as I want and not have to pay a penalty for it. What's a little bit more revealing is not a lot of my friends know that I have this car. My driving friends obviously know because I see them on a regular basis and they also have this car and they share the same dilemma. On a daily basis, I daily drive a C-Class Mercedes in white with an MB Tech's interior, which is completely unassuming to the world. So when people see that car and I show up to the office, they're like, oh yeah, it's a, nice, it's a beautiful car. And I'm like, it sure is. But I don't tell them about this. I mean, this is just like, you know, it's a crazy car that I can't drive to the office on a daily basis because I don't want to rack up the miles one, but I also don't want to bring that attention to myself. I buy this car not for the attention that it seeks, but I buy it and I bought it. And the reason why I want to buy more enthusiast cars down the line is because of the driving enjoyment and the visceral experience of what this car actually brings. And anything that's modern that's available today in the marketplace doesn't offer this very visceral raw experience because if they were to offer some of these things that are offered in this car today, it would be highly illegal. One, you need crash safety standard things along the entire perimeter of the car. You need a million airbags. You need an airbag in the steering wheel. You need a passenger side airbag. You need ABS. You need traction control. You need uh, all these different nannies and aids that are going to help keep you on the road. This does not help you at all. If you make any mistakes or if you're not alert, you're done, especially when driven at the limit. Because it is a rear engine car and it does not abide by the laws of physics, but somehow Porsche engineers managed to make this work. So it's not a car that I'm going to announce to the world, hey, look at me, rev really loud on the boulevard. No, that's not, that's not what I do. I buy this because I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy the experience of driving this car and I think that's the reason why people who own Porsches, that's why, they, that's why they, they gravitate towards these types of vehicles. This is the reason why I want to preserve this car to the best of my ability so I could keep it for a very long time because I know one, it's an amazing driving experience. Two, it's completely irreplaceable because in all the research that I've done over the past year, I can't find another dark blue car. It's, yeah, to me that's irreplaceable. The fact that it has this color combination of dark blue, dark blue, it's got a limited slip differential with a G50 transmission, it's got everything. The previous owners, they did an amazing job in maintaining this car and kudos to the original owner for ordering it the way it is because now it's in my hands. And with that said, I wanna thank you for watching. I promise that I'm going to do a night video on this. I know some of the viewers and some of my friends have been saying you need to do a night drive through Manhattan. And I do get out early enough where you see some of the skyscrapers lit up throughout the city. And I did get to drive in the city the other night. It was a lot of fun. So I need to actually film it. It's just one of those things that I have to do. So thank you for watching. And I look forward to bringing more content your way. Thank you. And subscribe right now. Yeah, do that right now. Subscribe. No, I'm serious. Subscribe. You just watched this whole video. You made it to the end. Thank you.